Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following lemma. Suppose s is a subset of real numbers and u is an upper bound of s. Then, u is the supremum of s if and only if, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an element s in s such that u minus epsilon is less than s. Okay, now in proving this lemma, we are going to rely on another lemma, which says the following. Given s is a subset of real numbers and u is a real number, then u is the supremum of s if and only if the following are true. One is that for all s and s, s is less than or equal to u. And two is that for all real numbers v, if v is less than u, then there exists an element s and s such that v is less than s. Now in the book I'm referring to, this lemma is referred to as lemma 2.3.3. And the book, by the way, is Introduction to Real Analysis by Bartle and Sherbert, fourth edition. Okay, now let's get into the proof of this lemma. To start out our proof, let's give ourselves an arbitrary subset of real numbers s and upper bound u of s. Now our goal from here is to prove that u is the supremum of s if and only if this is true. And we're trying to prove a statement containing if and only if. So what we're going to do is we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. And we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. Let's start by proving the forward. That is, if this is true, then this is true. And to do that, suppose this is true. And our goal is to prove this statement. Since we're trying to prove a statement about all positive real numbers, give me an arbitrary positive real number. I'll call it epsilon. And our whole goal from here is to prove that there exists an element s and s such that u minus epsilon is less than s. And to do so, we're going to apply lemma 2.3.3. Notice we have s is a subset of r, u is a real number, and in our situation, u is the supremum of s. So applying lemma 2.3.3, we have that both 1 and 2 hold. In particular, 2 holds. So we have that for all real numbers b, this is true. Now we're going to take v to be the real number u minus epsilon because u minus epsilon is less than u. And since u minus epsilon is less than u, it follows that there exists s and s such that u minus epsilon is less than s. So notice, there exists an s and s such that u minus epsilon is less than s, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. And since epsilon was arbitrary, this means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an s and s such that u minus epsilon is less than s. So we have proven if this is true, then this is true. And that completes the proof of the forward. Now let's prove the converse. That is, we're trying to prove if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose that this is true. Now, our whole goal in this step is to prove that u is the supremum of s. And to do so, we're going to apply lemma 2.3.3, right? We have that s is a subset of real numbers, u is a real number. So because of that, this is true if and only if one and two are true. Our goal is to prove this is true. So to do that, it amounts to prove that both one and two hold. Let's start by proving one. Well, since u is an upper bound of s, one automatically holds because one is the definition of an upper bound of s. So all that's left to show is that part two of lemma 2.3.3 holds. And to do that, we're trying to prove a statement about every real number. So give me an arbitrary real number. I'll call it v. And with this real number v, we want to show if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose that v is less than u. From here, we want to show that there exists an s and s such that v is less than s. And to prove this, we're going to need to somehow apply the fact that we know that for all epsilon greater than zero, that this is true. But we know that 
u minus v is greater than zero. And since this statement works for all positive real numbers, it must work for the positive real number u minus v. So if we take epsilon and replace it with u minus v, we get that there is some s and s such that u minus u minus v is less than s. And note that this is equal to b. So there exists an s and s such that v is less than s, which is exactly what we wanted to prove here. And therefore, we have proven that part two of lemma 2.3.3 holds. So we have proven that both one and two of lemma 2.3.3 holds. And since this is true, if and only if both one and two hold, it follows that this holds. So u is the supreme of s. So really, we have proven if this is true, then this is true. So we've proven both directions of the if and only if, which means we have proven the entire statement. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.